Blue Table fans, it's Monday. It's time for your studio update. It makes me happy. I'll probably keep doing this throughout the day. And away we go. Second, do have a little bit of a PSA. We are doing a, uh, I guess you'd call it a BTP fantasy camp where you uh, can come out. You live in the BTP house with BTP staff. Uh, it's for a week and you get to be uh, to, uh, taught how to assemble and paint by the best. So check the link for uh, details on that. All right, Josh, you're up first. Actually, hold on a second. All right, Josh, you're up first. What, what are you working on? What do you got? Uh, prototypes for three different Infinity Armies, actually. Oh, really? Yep. So it's three different armies with three different color schemes? Yeah. Okay, so Pan base Ocean. coats. Base Pan coats Oceania. Only. Okay. Hak Islam. This is gonna, probably going to be like a khaki with some black and green. Okay. And then uh, uh, Yujing, which will be white and uh, red armor, white, and then some black weapons, stuff like that, green eyes. Okay, great. And I couldn't help but notice this morning when I came in, this giant wad of chaos dwarfs all, uh, all painted up and ready to go. I need to get you some runes for the shields. And that, folks, is what they look like all done up. Wow, those make me happy. All right, that's fantastic. Thanks a lot, Josh. Hey, John. Hey. How was your weekend? It was good. Okay, it's great. Good a bunch of Marines. Awesome. So, for client or... Me personal satisfaction. Marines, did you say? Yeah. 40k Marines? Yes. Okay, and? And I'm almost done with my army. What army is... See, I didn't even know you were painting a Space Marine Army. I've had it here You just for did months. it. <laughs> is this your pea soup, guys? Yes. Okay, they're no fantastic. Pea soup. They're not? What are they? they Let's are. see. I want to see one. They're at home. I demand to see one right now. We'll drive home and get them. I'm, I can't. <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, love your Lady Averages shirt. Oh, thank you. That's fantastic. It's a BTP original. Nice. All right, great. You've been working on uh, epic squats. Yeah. About a zillion epic squats. Here tomorrow. they are. That's what those look like. Hold on. So we can get the lighting right on those. Uh, still working on the Titans. Looks like we have some base colors on those guys. Yeah. All right, fantastic. All right, well, your report wasn't very interesting, so you have to give an item of personal interest. Okay. I almost painted my entire Space Marine Army this weekend. Yay! That's my item of interest. All right, thanks. Yeah, and apparently somebody's building a pirate ship for somebody else. It was, uh, it's yeah, you. We're building two, me and Mason are building two pirate ships for my Pathfinder game. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, it's That's starting, crazy. It's starting in uh, not this Friday, but next Friday. And I'm hoping to get a lot of studio people to... Well, I want to see. You should bring them down so we can see them. Okay, uh, one's at Mason's house. Who's who's in your Pathfinder game? Uh, so far, it's my roommate, John. Uh, John over there showed some interest, and Zane showed some interest. Okay. Uh, I was going to invite you as well. Okay, great. Um, you should know, though, that I'm not a very good player. <laughs> I generally, I get bored and I start being disruptive. Right. Okay, go ahead. Um, but yeah, it's uh, the new Adventure Path from Pathfinder. It's all piratey stuff. Okay. So I'm excited. Oh, it's a Serpent Skull. Uh, Shackles and Skulls. Okay, never mind me. <laughs> I guess I don't know anything. So let's take a look at what you're working at. This is your uh, Spartans, yep. right? So uh, this is actually a This is artistic license. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, the client just wanted it to be highly weathered. Highly right? weathered. And with my spluttering technique, I almost passed out. Okay, great. <laughs> God, that is really, really super. So is this a Forge World piece, or is this just really converted? I think it's really converted. Um, I looked on the it's Forge World. Call. Yeah, because um, they, they do have this on Forge World, mm -hmm. that kind but of But also, it's, um, if you look at the bottom, you can tell where he's extended it. Oh, I see. So, okay, so maybe he did like what James did, mm -hmm. right? So, and it's a really great conversion. Let's take a look at this other one. Yep. Yeah, this is off of an emulator, a Sisters of Battle thing. Mm -hmm. So there's like a servitor in there, yep. all strapped in. And I think this is something we worked on. Okay, uh, yes, that was like one of the only things that needed to be assembled. All right, thanks a lot, Ben. No problem. I think you should say Hey, go ahead. I don't know how Marvel the Martian says servitor. Oh, you will serve me. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So little little shades of Kermit the Frog there. 
<laughs> Servitor. <laughs> Servitor. All right, fantastic. I wanted to get this on film. This is uh, Ben's um, K door, mm -hmm. Jack. So Ben owes me a game. I'm not joking around, Ben. I'm Gonna not either. Me. My goal for tonight is to get my Legion army painted. Oh, wow. Okay. You're cracking. All right, Karen. If that is... Oh, hold on. I'm trying to get rid of the pixelation by having it pre-focus. Okay, go ahead. What's up? I'm working on some sepulcher stalkers. General stuff. A lot All of right, stuff let's take a look. Finished. Let's just get right in the bin here. Yeah. So there's those guys. Let's grab a... Whoa, hello. Did you paint these buildings too? Mm -hmm. Wow, that is very backlit. Sorry about that, folks. So uh, what level of painting is this? Oh, that guy's a level three. Okay, just uh, war gamer standard. Mm -hmm. um, I plan on doing a video about the levels that talks a lot about it. Uh, we have uh, internal standard and external standard. So, um, and all of this uh, has uh, a base concept which is called fair scrutiny, which means how close can you look at a figure and start criticizing it based on the level. So here's how it works. So let's say you're playing a game with an opponent. Level two is, quote, looks good from across the table. So that's the level of scrutiny you get to give that. That's the external standard. The internal standard uh, is uh, notably higher. Um, so level three, that's looks good from your side of the table. And you can actually start to uh, pick out some details there. So if somebody purchases a level uh, three army, and they take each and every piece and they put it in front of their face like this and give it a 360. And uh, they're like, hey, you missed a spot under this guy's armpit. Mm, undo scrutiny on that. And uh, most of these games are meant uh, like it's squads of guys. So uh, it's meant to be evaluated as a group. And that's something we consider also with the levels. And then uh, as you go to a four, you can go to arm's length. And then a five you could uh, actually really get all around on a figure and uh, examine it much more closely. In fact, let's take a look at these Demi-Griff Knights. Here's the Demi-Griff Knights. Uh, this is what we call level five scrutiny, which means that uh, you are really, really, really up close. So if these were level fours, here's where I would bust poor Karen's chops for these figures. Um, the uh, gold, uh, only has one level of shading, meaning it has uh, like a, a base coat, dry brush, and then it has some kind of uh, glaze or, uh, or deepening effect on it. And uh, for level four, we expect uh, that to be more uh, picked out. Uh, we also look for variation. So uh, for example, uh, if these models were level two and uh, the demi-griff were like this grayish color and also the harness were the same color, that would actually be passable. Um, these have not actually passed inspection yet. This is all uh, preliminary work. Uh, but these are looking pretty good. As you may notice, this guy has a bit of a bleed on his, uh, on his, uh, where this uh, whole red, this bricky red, is kind of bled out onto the model. And uh, it is likely that the art director will ask for that to get, uh, to get cleaned up uh, as, uh, as we go on. So basically, uh, we just look at it longer and harder uh, depending on uh, what the level of painting is. Uh, quite frankly, I think level three is our strongest suit, uh, which is you're going to end up with quite a handsome uh, looking army. It's going to look great on the tabletop. Uh, you just really can't uh, get in there and, you know, uh, nitpick every single uh, little item. So uh, th there you go. Um, and the these do have a decent amount of variation on them. Uh, like you notice the skulls are a different color. This guy has skulls. Uh, and then the chain is uh, also uh, also picked out. Um, so there you go. All right, while we're at it, why don't we look at some infinity. I have absolutely no idea what this is. Well, I do have an idea. It's uh, one of the larger figures for the combined army. It's kind of this insectoid creature. Why don't you tell us what this is, James? Um, I came over here. I know what it is, but now I forgot. Okay. <laughs> Brain fart. All right. Well, you're not useful. All right. So there's that guy. All right. Here's another one. 
This is a Dragos for Pan Oceana. What level of painting is this project supposed to be? These are fours. Okay, so there you go. This was a cascuta, by the way. Right, so levels two, three, and four are for, um, are for infantry, like massed groups. So that guy is really super. All right, here we go. Here's uh, some more Pan Oceana, just to give you a feel for what those guys look like. These have decorative bases. Uh, I do believe this is bark on here, which makes a very convincing stone. I guess nature's uh, patterns repeat themselves. All right, here's some more combined figures. Again, remember, and I'm sorry I can't narrate these better, uh, combined is like the alien army in Infinity. And uh, do remember that you are getting uh, what is level 6 scrutiny on these guys, which is you're looking at them as if they were about 6 inches in front of your face. Right, next up for your viewing pleasure, a work in progress for a level 3 figure. This is a Games Workshop Thunderwolf Cavalry. It's on a 60 millimeter base. Uh, so uh, this is uh, tabletop only on this guy. And uh, once again, he's not quite finished. Uh, you notice he has a red eye and a blue eye. I asked uh, Ben One what that was about, and he said he probably was going to change it. And look at this. Oh no, his arm came off. That's right, these guys have tons of magnetization. You notice they're magnetized at the wrists. Another thing I like is these uh, power fists are actually hollowed out. So that makes for a very convincing uh, switch out on that. And also his weapon is magnetized in his uh, right hand, shoe fly. Um, so there you go. So that's a little bit of posability there. Um, you'll notice that uh, the magnet does create kind of an articulated point at the wrist there. So uh, one thing we look for is to make sure those aren't shiny. Uh, and uh, you may have noticed a shiny spot on the shield here. Uh, that is something the art director uh, should pick up on and uh, probably um, uh, make sure that that happens. So anyway, uh, Thunder Wolf Cavalry. All right, you're on, stud. Impress me. Uh, Show me. How was your weekend? Oh, the weekend was good. Good. Just I heard uh, you were relaxed. working on a pirate ship or something. I didn't do any work on the pirate yeah. ship. I saw like some of the materials they would be using. All right. Fantastic. Not really. <laughs> I didn't see any of it, really. <laughs> All right. All right, great. So you've got some uh, demi griff knights. Yep. One uh, wrong way Rodney on here. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's. I like these bases. He's trying to get them to flee with this. <laughs> right. He's like, Turn men. On. Did you get, did you Backwards this? out. No, this is I the Carmine Dragon. Dragon. And uh, the rider is, okay. is magnetized. Right. Am I looking at a slick. finished work? Yeah. Yup. That is It's Elspeth. pretty handy. Pretty handy. Handy. Yeah. Um, Ren magnetized her, so. Right, I mean, that's it's fantastic. Even just the green stuff over like the magnet itself. So. Right. Right. So you, you yeah. really can't tell. It's just like a it's scale. There. At the, and I like there's a little dragon's egg in the yeah, it's like a little crook of the base thing. there. Okay, great. And this is uh, Theodore Bruckner, base yeah. coats only on yeah, this I'm one just, so like, far. Giving him and uh, the put put that out next to the other demi griff knights. Yeah, check so out. people can see how much bigger. I was he curious is. about the guy because I I was like, how is this guy two times bigger than a normal you know empire mm, soldier? Because he's amazing. This well, is probably the, how big they were going to make these originally. Well, on the Forge World, World rules and the fluff, apparently yeah. he's just a giant of a man. Right. In the game, so. Yeah. He's literally like two times better than the regular guys. So that's how they've been. All right, thanks a lot. Yeah. All right, we got, we're down a trade stock. We got in an Iron Warriors army on trade. Uh, this is BTP painted, and we could uh, expand on that quite easily. Comes with this uh, defiler. And uh, yeah, it's got this uh, head conversion, which is kind of cool, like half. Uh, exposed so iron within iron without it has these converted rhinos they have uh, plates on them and number markings which is a nice feature so that's how those look some uh, hazard markings and weatherings uh, or <laughs> weathering I guess it's singular uh, this little iron warrior symbol on one side 
And then uh, two units of Iron Warriors, that's uh, 10 here. Um, let's take a look at this guy. This is actually a uh, pretty cool conversion. Has some modifications, some uh, rubble built up on the base, melt a gun there. Uh, or is it a combi melt? -a? Nope, it's a melt -a gun. All right, let's look at another guy. Here's a hero type. And uh, he's on what appears to be the uh, uh, sarcophagus of an Imperial Fists dreadnought. So uh, lots of pieces uh, used on this, uh, specialty pieces. In fact, these guys have uh, heads, and I'm pretty sure they're Forge World heads. So uh, that is what those look like. Oh, and there's some uh, Forge World backpacks. So this is really a nice lot. And guess what? Yes, there's more. Uh, so that's 11 guys. And then here's another unit of guys. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten guys here. And I think these have like close combat weapons and conversions and stuff on them. I'm pretty sure this is from Orc, from the Orc range. So that's what that guy looks like. Uh, so uh, there you go. It's uh, just our standard uh, level three work, I'm pretty sure. And um, uh, there you go. It's uh, 21 figures, two rhinos, and a defiler. Also, I put my own infinity army, uh, which is really just these six figures, uh, on the block. I, I really just, I ended up just never really playing it. So uh, let's take a look at what these look like. So there's that gal right there. There we go. That's a slightly better backdrop. Oh, that's great. All right, let's take a look at one more figure. Might have to uh, get a little closer up here. There we go. Let's see if I can focus in on her. Uh, got some really nice base work on there. These are painted by Joseph. So uh, that is a nice feature. I'm putting up these giant, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of haphazard now. Uh, all these void blisters, this is an out of print game. And uh, it's got a lot of really cool figures in it. We're going to sell them uh, inexpensively by blister, uh, but also random. So you just get one random blister uh, out of this. I think there's at least a hundred in here. So uh, a lot of cool science fiction stuff. Uh, definitely, definitely a lot of fun. Oh, that guy, that guy's kind of cool. I think there's a head floating in there around. Oh no, that's his head. It's just uh, really down in his armor. The giant news? is Mason finished his ogres. We didn't finish, he finished all his ogre infantry and heroes. Do you wanna take a look? Do you wanna see him? I know you do. Yeah, and it was thanks to your unmitigated pressure for no apparent reason, yeah. right? It is true. So here they are, I'm just gonna give them, I'm gonna give them the sweep. Dun, 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 dun. Oh yeah, I'm not getting very good lighting on here. Sorry guys. Maybe I should turn him like this. How's that? And he's done some really exquisite base work on here. Oh no, that's not bad. Look at those guys. Yeah, conversion work. Look at the uh, iron gut weapons. Aren't those neat? Oh, those are absolutely fantastic. And I want a piece of these. We have a client that uh, is uh, playing uh, Lizardmen. And he wants me to do a bat rep, and I think that may be just the thing. Lizardmen v. Ogres. Of course, I am really out of, uh, out of practice on my Lizardmen. Look at all that tattoo work. Isn't that great? Don't show them the gray stuff down there. The gray stuff? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's what's going to be happening. Yep, that's right. He's got uh, some Morn Fangs. Mason's going back to Washington this weekend. Yep. To pick up his stuff. Pick up my stuff, ship it. Yep, that's bring right. Bring plane, whatever I gotta do to get that's here. That's right. So there yeah. you go. So when we do BTP Fantasy Camp, Mason will be one of your roommates. That's true. Yep, that's, true. that's right. <laughs> and uh, there you go. Cool. Yeah, that those, those look really fantastic. Thanks. So how many points do we have with your two Iron Blasters and your eight Mornfang Cavalry? Oh, actually, 12 Mornfang. 12 Mornfang Cavalry? Yikes. So, and those are pretty expensive. Um, Why aren't they like 65 points each? Yeah. Yeah, 70, that's 300 70, for three. Iron Fists. 
So yeah, so it's like thirteen hundred points at least. Just with those. Just for those twelve so guys, but that's like awesome. Minimum three K army. I think it'd be more like oh yeah. Four. Yeah. To be honest. All right, my chaos dwarfs are ready. Uh, I'm ready I think I can take you. <laughs> I don't think you really have much of a chance uh, we'll against see. them. We'll see. Yep. I feel pretty good about D3 it. D three wounds is all I have to say. Now they're painted, so I won't roll so bad with them. That's right. <laughs> that, that does matter. Makes a difference. That does matter. Always. All right. Thanks, Mason. Yeah. All right. What's here's up? Rin. Um, uh, refurbing a Necron army. Yep. That's right. We're gonna have the, on, that on the block for probably right around three hundred. Um, I do believe it's about fifteen hundred points. Would you say? Um, yeah, there's like 40 yeah, warriors, right. Lich Guard, a Monolith, yeah, it's got stuff in it. Nice it's got ringer. stuff. Yep. Um, so, three, but, four, uh, four, yeah, four, uh four, you do get four. what you pay for, so, uh, and that's my thing. I want to take these old armies, find good homes for them, and make it, in, make it within reach to, uh, to, to pick these armies up. That will, uh, make Sean happy. All right, Brett, tell us all about it. What hey, do you got? All right, guys, I got uh, my Free Blades um, Free Bland here, basically. This is a game that we, uh, we demoed at Adepticon, and right. it's a skirmish type game. So you're still painting these, right? Yeah, they're, they're still in the process. This, yeah, this first one's done, the rest done. of them are still in the process. And um, James and I will be reviewing this game next in our series of videos. And okay, um, yeah. It's a pretty fun game. So what uh, faction is this? These are the um, Heraldon Questers. Okay. They're kind of your typical questing knights. So. All right, fantastic. Yeah. Thanks a lot. You're welcome.